Meanwhile, the SNRs sang in glory to Jehovah. Presently, the host passed out and beyond the pillars of fire. When all had quieted, God said, Let the builders of ships begin now, and build a ship for me and my hosts. For the time draweth near, and let the graders choose from my laborers, who have toiled a hundred years, day and night, without ceasing. Such as shall be my companions and hosts on my journey, according to their grade shall they be chosen. And even so were they chosen and notified, and God said, Whilst I shall be absent, there shall sit on my throne, a being God in my place, a he who standeth highest in the grades, according to the transcendency of him who hath done the most for the resurrection of the Essians, who shall be your God and my God. And God commanded the graders to present before the throne the records that the council of Horeb might determine the matter, and this was so done. And Haja, an Ethereum, was chosen, and God commanded him to send word unto Haja with an escort to conduct him to the capital. In due time, the escort brought Haja into the palace of the kingdom of God, and God was a sitting on the throne. With music they came in and filled in front of the throne a foam and a crescent with Haja betwixt the horns. A God said by command of Jehovah, Have I summoned thee hither, O Haja? Long have I known thee, even on other worlds. Of all virtues in man would stand highest, which is never to mention oneself. Thou excellest all men in my kingdom. Thy labors for the general upraising a whole red excellest all others. For this reason thou art preferred, and by Jehovah chosen to be my assistant while I am here, and in my absence to be my very God in the Father's name. Hey, Jah said, This'll be the will of Jehovah, proceed thou. Ha! God struck the gavel, and the holy council rose to their feet. God said, In Jehovah's name, I salute thee, Haja, as God a tech. See tablet I.E.O. Zan at the end of Book of Wars against Jehovah to hold dominion in Horeb. Come forth and receive thou my throne for the Father's sake. The marshals then conducted Haja to the foot of the throne, and Gyod came down and took his hand and led him up. And as they were going forth a light, as a golden fire came down from the firmament above, sent by the kingdoms high exalted, and Gyod and Haja were covered around about and illuminated. And God said, By thy wisdom, love, and power, O Jehovah, do I receive this thy son on thy throne. Be thou with him in wisdom and strength for thy glory forever. Amen. A gold raised up a rod, waving it, and rain came down from a heaven. Haja said, in thy name, O Jehovah, whereupon a God stretched forth his hand unto Jehovah, a saying, Give me a crown for thy son, God of Tech, O Jehovah. And there descended as if a small star far lengthened out a lot of gold and silver, and it settled on Gyald's a hand, and it fashioned it into a crown, and emblazoned it with the sign of the Gyald attack, and placed it on Haja's head, a saying, 
in Jehovah's name, the crown to sit on the throne in Horeb during my absence. Hey, Jah said, Thy son, O Jehovah, shall fulfill thy commandments in wisdom and love. May the Father, creator of worlds, give this thy son rest and comfort for the glories he hath wrought in thy name. Amen. The council said, Amen. The SNRs chanted an anthem of praise to Jehovah, and the God led Hajah forth and seated him on the throne, saying, Thou art God in my name, and Jehovah's also. And since I now go down to the earth to sojourn for a season, thou shalt be known as God of both earth and heaven. So God departed out of Horeb and embarked on a ship, a taken with him seven thousand men and women for his escort, beside a thousand Essenors and the crew of three thousand to work the ship. Chapter 6 And a god went to the provinces of the governors of heaven dwelling on earth, whom he had appointed and sent forth. And as he himself had been commissioned by Jehovah and Horeb, so did he install the governors on their seats. And the governors were situated within Waga, Pan, at remote distances, but God sent messengers to him and notifying him of the time he would appear. And the Lord being apprised of God's a journey established a protectorate in the Lord's kingdom in the city of Ulu on earth and went and joined the ship of God and traveled with him throughout Waga being present at the inauguration of the governors in these heavens. To each of all the governors, God said, ha, Remember that that which is given to my governors pertaineth to things in heaven. For the Lord's matters pertain to earthly things, and to angels that labor with the corporeans. But ye are to attend to the Essians, receiving them in heaven, provide them with places to sojourn, and in their helplessness supply them with food and clothes, and the rudiments of learning. A God said, Remember ye also the time cometh when each of these governorships shall attain to an independent kingdom, and instead of being governors ye shall be raised as some gods. After God established the governors, the Lord persuaded God to visit his place in Ulu, and thence to go around about on earth and see the morals with whom the Lord had to deal. And God consented, and the Lord sent messengers on before him, that the house of the Lord which the mortals had built might be replenished and cleansed. And the protectorate notified the Ashars, and the Ashars impressed mortals to go and cleanse and purify the house of the Lord. And so mortals fell to work and cleansed the place and burned incense of sweet myrrh and hepatan, not even knowing they were fulfilling the command of the Lord. When the ship of the host of God came to the city of Ulu, a mortal saw it high in the air, and they feared and ran hastily to consult the prophet of the Lord. And the prophet said, Behold, a God appeareth in a sea of fire, and the firmament of heaven. And a God calls the ship to be made unseen. 
that fear might subside on earth. And he descended with his hosts into the house of the Lord, and they went and touched the things mortals had builded, that they might perceive corporeality. And the Lord gave a banquet, and the angels a gold turned four days, exchanging fellowship with the Ashars, who ministered to mortals. And the Ashars took the angels a gold around about them amongst mortals, both whilst having mortals were asleep and awake, I showed them all things. And because of the presence of the host of God, the mortals were aroused with their new vigor to worship the Lord, rising early and a going to the house of worship and continuing all day, and not one of them knew the cause thereof. On the beginning of the fourth day, a god commanded his host to prepare to renew the journey, and the ship was again illumined and set for its course. And god said, O Jehovah, who createth all, look down and bless thy Lord. He hath from his high estate in Etheria descended to these poor mortals to lift them up. Already hath he toiled with them a hundred years. Three generations have risen up out of the earth, and they begin to glorify thee in thy kingdoms above the earth. Who but thee, O Jehovah, can honor thy Lord, or know his sore trials? Behold, the man groweth up out of the earth the same. There is no Lord and no God, but his feet and his hands are guided every hour of the day. Yea, when he entereth the unseen worlds, they become seen. But he is helpless in a strange place, and the Lord provideth them and teacheth them thy kingdoms. Thy Lord goeth from place to place on the earth. He findeth a corner and saith, Here will I build a city. He sendeth his angels forth, and they inspire man on the earth to come and build a city. Yet when the city is built, my hand saith, Behold, there is no God and no Lord. Thy Lord bringeth the corporeans together, and guardeth them day and night. But man turneth away in strife and destruction. Then the Lord withdraweth his angels of the city because of its wickedness, and lo, the city falleth in ruin. But man knoweth not the cause, yet the Lord toileth on, day and night a-watchin', a-guardin' and strivin' to lift man up out of the darkness. O Jehovah, Father, bless the Lord and his sons, Haste the time when man shall comprehend the foundations of thy kingdoms. Were, were. The Lord said, O Jehovah, ever present, hear the words of thy God. He who comprehendeth the whole earth and the heaven of the earth, knoweth no day nor no night. He dealeth with millions. His judgment is sufficient for all. Glorify him, thy son, of heaven and earth. He fashioned the homes of thy lords, and thy little ones in great wisdom. His love is the glory of all men. His strength the fashion after thy kingdoms. Give swiftness and rest and joy in thy quickening to thy God. <laughs> the mortals of the city of Ulu had gathered together to worship. And they were singing and dancing to the Lord. And the angels joined in the singing also. And the God went and sat on the altar and illuminated it. So the mortals could see him. And the chief prophet came near the place of the Lord. And the Lord placed his hand on the forehead of the prophet. So he might speak in the name of God. 
The prophet said, Behold me, I am the God of heaven and earth, and my words come out of the mouth of this my prophet. Keep holy the four days of the moon, for they are the Lord's days. See ceremonies a hiding, safe, and also moss. Do no evil, but strive for wisdom to do good. And when ye are dead, behold, ye shall live. For I have places prepared for ye in my heaven. Whoa, whoa. Rejoice and be merry, for the Lord liveth and reigneth. Oh, when the prophet ceased, a god arose up from the altar, and his traveling host also, and saluting the Lord in the name of Jehovah, and disappeared in heaven above. Chapter 7 as mortals sail corporeal ships across the corporeal ocean, so sailed the ship of God in the atmospheric ocean. As a man having five sons sendeth four away to far off countries and keepeth one at home, so did God with the five lords bequeathed him by great Jehovah. And now had God departed from the foundation of Hope Red, in a ship in heaven to visit his four far-off sons, the lords of the four great divisions of the earth, who had to do with both mortals and the spirits of the dead, for the glory of Jehovah. First a Judd, Lord a Judd, he headed his ship a running close to the earth, a bound and forth and sapping up fuel from the tall forest to feed the phosphorus and flame, a running easy till the wild coast on the west of Huaga was reached. Here halted he his ship. First God of the first lords of earth, till his navigators told the distance of the wide sea before. Then the gathering fuel and substance from the rich growing lands, he stowed the ship to the full, he and his trail and hosts. Aha! And the God went in the commanding, Go forth, go forth forth into the sea of heaven, and I'll plunge the ship of God in the winds of the blue firmament. I saw and above the black clouds a sprung from the corporeal ocean, and the music of his thousand s and hours leaped forth in the time and tune to the waves, plenteous and most defied. Jehovah looked down from the highest of all the heavens, his everlasting throne of thrones a saying, Onward, onward, tame the elements, O God, O man, the earth is thine, the air is above thine, stretch forth thine arm and tame the elements I have made. Onward sped the ship of God by the force of wills matured, and from its hallowed light displaying its a purpose of their traveling gods and men in other ships a cruising on adventurous paths in Jehovah's wide oceans of splendor. A merrily sang the crew and danced inside the wide expanse, promising of the scattered ships coursing hither and yon in strange colors and marvelous swiftness. On one side the rising moon, the setting sun on the other, beneath lie the black clouds and great corporeal ocean, and yet high above twinkled the stars and the planets of the great serpent on his long journey. And a god came forth and surveyed the scene, and power of Jehovah moved upon him. Then gathered around him his seven thousand loves and the traveling companions, and a god said, 
all thy places are new, great Jehovah. For thousands of years have I gazed on thy matchless splendors, seen and unseen. But thy glory groweth richer day by day. When thy voice came to me more than a hundred years ago, was saying, Go, my son, I have a new garden planted. Take some workmen and tell the sorrow. I foresaw the long labor of the generations that would spring up out of the earth. I feared and trembled. I said, How shall it be, O Jehovah? Shall the new earth be peopled over and mortals run their course as on other worlds before? First, in a wholesome love and worship and due reference to the gods, and then for ages and ages bury themselves in bloody wars. Oh, lead me forth, Father Jehovah. I will take thy garden for a season and fence it round with lords and wiser kingdoms. And with thy potent spirit hedge mortals on every side. But the earth shall bloom as a paradise for angels and men. And thy sons and daughters came with me and engrafted thy immortal kingdom. How is it now? How compares my labor with that of other gods on other words? Oh, ye archangels, gods, and goddesses, look down on the great earth. Jehovah hath filled my arms with a great load. I tremble on the immortal scales, and God transfixed looked up into the swift passing sky, for his voice reached to the thrones of ethereal worlds, whereon the Osarian regents reigned in all power. And down from amidst the stars shot a single ray of light, engrossed with the adorable words, Jehovah's Son, all hail, hail God of earth, Jehovah's Son, glory, glory to great Jehovah for all that thou hast done. Then upward furled the shining light till it faded amidst the far off stars. Anew the trumpeters and singers sent forth a strain of sweet music, a spirited and a sounding full of soul. And as the music glided forth across the waters, lo, another music, strange and welcome, came from the west lands to the borders of the ocean. The ship was across the sea, and the host of the Lord had come to meet the God of earth and heaven. And now, saluting loud and long, the two ships drew to close anchorage. Presently the messengers interchanged, and in Jehovah's name greeted God and his hosts, who were old-time friends to the Lord and his. God said, By thy will, O Jehovah, let us take course for the Lord's kingdom and place a labor. And presently the two ships sped forth close to the earth, conjoined in the music anthems of olden times, uh, far up into the heart of the country, where fertile lands and mountains and waters were close companion to the Asian race. The ships led on till one pillar of fire standing on a mountainside proclaimed the space of the Lord, and here they halted and made fast the vessels unseen by mortals. Chapter 8 These chieftains had been long friends on other worlds, and pledged to join in an adventure on some new corporeal world to raise up to Jehovah's sons and daughters. Now is it being fulfilled in the Lord, and God remotely situated in the time of this visit much looked forward to. And so God and the Lord came forth a saying, In Jehovah's name met at last, and they embraced and reassured each other that each it was really true, which they had talked of a thousand years before. 
And then came forward all the host of God and the host of the Lord, unknowing one another and saluting and embracing also. Thereupon they proceeded to the house of the Lord, which mortals had been inspired to build of wood and the clay. And when they were within, they joined in prayer and thanks to Jehovah. And they sang and danced and rejoiced in their soul's content. At sunrise the next morning, the mortal priests and priestesses, led by a prophet, went into the house of the Lord to pray and sing and dance, as they had been taught by inspiration of the Lord. But many people lingered without saying to one another, I fear, I fear to hop. For last night I saw lights in the house of the Lord, and I heard like singing and dancing before the altar of God. Nevertheless, their companions persuaded them, and they went in and sang and danced also. After a time of rejoicing and a quiet, the Lord said, Behold, O God, the fall is a judgment, and the vain calculations of even lords and gods. We look upon the mature man as sin. Alas, he is stubborn in his way. We cannot convert him. Then we desire the immature, as saying, Him will I raise up in mine own way, and he shall not depart from my judgment. But we tire his immaturity and slow growth. God said, Hereon hangeth the highest testimony of the person of great Jehovah. The nearest blank of all the living created he man, purposely unlike all the rest and devoid of sense. Whereas according to the order of the other animal world, a newborn babe should be already wise. Jehovah saith, All the living have I provided with certain paths to travel in, but man alone I created new out of all things dead and dissolved, and he shall grow forever. To the beast I gave an already created sense of self, to man I allotted angels, and even these have I provided with others above them, and yet others above them forever and ever. Hence the first of man, the newborn babe, I created a blank in sense and judgment, that he may be a witness that even he himself was fashioned and created anew by my hand. And neither created I him imperfectly, that he should re-enter a womb and be born over again. That which I do is well done, saith Jehovah. The Lord saith, Thou art wise, O God. The opposites prove Jehovah. Water runneth downhill, but man walketh up the hillside. The tree groweth up out of the ground whilst it liveth, but after death it falleth. Man standeth on the earth, but the earth resteth on that which is lighter than the earth. Jehovah saith, The light of the trees of me. The unseen that holdeth the corporeal earth in its place is a me. And yet, O oh God, who can attain to know Jehovah? The mortal saith, When I am dead and risen in heaven, I shall see the great spirit. But he faileth, being as still helpless, yea, as helpless in his place as he was helpless on the earth. When he saith, When I am strong and wise, like lords and gout, <laughs> and can traverse the wide firmament, then will I see Jehovah. But when he riseth and can shape his vessel through the whirlwinds of the vortices of heaven, and he called the Lord or God, lo, he findeth the arks and the atheists standing before him still. More and more is he appalled at the thought of the great I am who liveth still beyond. He hurrieth down to the corporeal earth to teach immortals and spirits of Jehovah and his endless worlds and exalted heavens. But lo, the darkness of men, they say, I see him not, I hear him not. I believe him not. He is but as the wind a-going without sense, 
As the water goeth down the hill, so is he. A he is dead, a he is a nothing. And the Lord inventeth ways and means. Yea, he teacheth man to pray and sing to Jehovah, that the signs may lead his soul upward. The Lord telleth him to wear clothes, hide his nakedness from the Lord. And the Lord sendeth angels to award him for his good deeds. And the angels of the Lord lay plots and stratagems in man's pathway to stir him up. He, Jehovah, gave him sleep so that his corporeal bound spirit might see and hear heavenly things. But man loadeth his stomach, and debaucheth on intoxicating smoke and drink, till his soul is a bird in darkness. And the Lord crieth out in despair, How weak am I, o Jehovah, before thee! I took upon me to be lord over men on the earth, to learn my lessons in the government of worlds. But, O oh, Jehovah, I know I fail in thy sight. What will thy God say when he beholdeth my little good? What pity hath the archangels for thy struggling lord of earth? And a God perceived the sorrow of his friend, and he saith, O oh, Jehovah, who art almighty, how keener is thou made our sense of our weakness than those who look upon us. Thy the word is my God, and the glories he hath wrought out of such crude substance, and I sing to his praise and love. <laughs> Lo, I have looked upon the naked man and woman of this great land, a crawling on hands and feet, with no thought but to eat, and I have seen him raised up by the Lord and his ashars, to walk upright and use words of speech, and to wear clothes and skins, and to hide their nakedness. Yea, O Father, I have cried out with great joy, and I called aloud unto thee, O Jehovah, is saying, uh, Who knoweth the labor of the Lord? Uh, will man ever forget to sing the praises to the Lord God? Uh, but Jehovah saith, I will keep some of the tribes of men in darkness till the last days. For man and his conceit shall be confounded. Uh, for he shall perceive that the tribes of darkness cannot put away their own darkness. Uh, yea, man shall bow down in reverence to my lords in the early days of the earth. Thus conversed God and his Lord as they went forth to see the work of the Lord, and to find the mortals that had given up the places of Asu, and come to live in villages and cities. Around about over the continent the Jud they traveled for many days and nights. And when God had seen all the work of the Lord, he said, Behold, it is good. Thy toil and seclusion away from the lords of the upper heavens are severe, but thou art a fashion in the love of millions. Who shall bless thee? What will now whilst the God sojourned here, his hosts regaled themselves with the company of the Ashars and Asaphs in the kingdom of the Lord, and great was the love and rejoicing amongst them. Chapter 9 when Gyal's a visit was ended, and the hosts and notified, the Lord gave a banquet that lasted two days and nights, during which the angels sang and danced and trumpeted before God. After that, Gyal and his hosts embarked on the ship in readiness to proceed on the journey, and the Lord went up to the ship to take leave, and his hosts went with him, and a Gyal said, when Dan approacheth, we shall meet again. May Jehovah prosper thy harvest till then. <laughs> the Lord said, That is another hundred years. O oh God, I almost live in a wilderness. I have not ten millions of souls, mortals, and spirits. God said, Thy kingdom shall be mighty when I come again. May it glorify Jehovah. 
They embraced and separated. Each gave the sign of Jehovah's name. Upward raised the ship and gowled with banners outstretched and new ornamented by the Lord's angels. And now a taken course still west sped on above the mountain tops like a meteor hurled from heaven. Meanwhile, the trumpeters gave forth the gladly solemn sound of the march of God. Aha! But ere the ship had made half its journey, an approaching light came from the far west, radiant and laden with hosts from the Lord of Dis and the Lord of the Earth also. When the ships drew near and halted, a god called with a loud voice, saying, In Jehovah's name, all hail, I know my Lord cometh. And thereupon the Lord answered, Hail to thee, O God, son of Jehovah. And they turned the Lord's ship and lashed the twain together, even as they sped on. Now after they had all exchanged welcome and good wishes, the Lord said, Ere we go to my central throne, let us survey the continent over which thy servant is a lord of land and water. And the God answered, Thy will be done, O Lord. And so they journeyed for many days, off to descend into the earth in places where the Lord's angels had begun colonies with mortals impressing man with words of speech into living villages. And God said that all he saw was good and well done. So they came to the throne of the Lord and halted and sojourned for sixty days. And a God and his hosts and the Lord and his Ashars and Asaphs were together in general reunion, a praying, a singing, and dancing, and a reasoning on the endless works of Jehovah. But one book could not contain all that was said and done, and of the excursions made and the visits over the plains and mountains, where in thousands of years hence man should live and build cities, and go to war and destroy them. And the mathematicians foretold the great cities and nations that would rise up, how this one and that one would move to battle, how their great cities would fall in ruins and be covered up by fallen nebulae, and by denuded mountains washing down upon them, so that even their remembrance should be lost. And yet further on, the mathematicians foretold the coming of Cosmon, when the ruined cities would be discovered and their histories deciphered by the Sioux eyes of man in great Jehovah's hand. And now, when all these things were estimated, the prophets and mathematicians went before Gatwood according to the commandments of the Lord. And they spake before Gatwood, a son of Jehovah, telling all these wonders. When they had finished, a god said, O oh, what is our service on the earth, O oh Lord? A few centuries at most, and we will have risen up from the earth, taken our hosts with us to dwell in a higher realms. But there shall be other gods and lords after us to deal with mortals and spirits and newly born. After a while there shall be great warriors and great cities and nations, and they shall have gods and lords of their times who will dwell many a weary year, a century in the darkness with man. After that again, even the gods and lords will be forgotten, and man will turn against great Jehovah, putting to death his adherents, preferring the idols of stone and metal, and the spirits born a woman. The Lord said, And yet further on a brighter light adorneth the way, great Jehovah's hand ascendeth traveling words into the light of Cosmon, and new prophets arise a gathering up the histories lost, and glorious plan of the great spirit over all. Yea, even thy labor in my ships will be seen by mortals of that day. 
and thus they discoursed of reading the past and the future, and away in the present whilst angels a lesson formed and gathered round to learn how worlds are peopled, and how nations and cities destroyed, the far off and the near at hand being as nothing in Jehovah's vast universe. But the time came for a gold's departure, and he and his traveling host embarked, and the Lord and his angels drew round to receive God's prayer ere he left. And so after they had embraced and parted, God said, Though I go away, my love abideth with you all. And now, O Jehovah, bless these my fellow laborers, and make them a strong to endure their great trials. Thine is the power and glory, O Father, amen. The ship arose, and the trumpeters gave forth. Glory to thee, O Jehovah, forever and ever. Chapter 10 Jehovah spake to God, saying, Stir thy ship to the south land, my son, and visit thy Lord, who is the God of Bohu. And the God went as commanded to the south, running close to the earth over deserts and mountains. But when they were a short way on the journey, they were met by the Lord, who had been apprised of God's a-coming. And the ship of the Lord came also and made fast to the vessel of God. And all the angels saluted and intermingled having known one another hundreds of years, and some for more than a thousand years. The Lord said on our journey, let us a run through the valleys and the banks of rivers, for it is here that both Asu and Pen dwell. And so they journeyed a survey in the earth as they sailed above. The country was mostly barren, not supporting man nor beast. But by the riversides man dwelt a burrowing in the ground to avoid the heat by day and the cold by night. And they came to places where the angels of the Lord were a-dwelling with mortals. Heaven inspired them to make villages and to hide their naked. The Lord said, Behold, O God, only the unseen is potent over man. Could the beast or the stones or the forest tell man to hide his nakedness? He would not. Neither will he heed his brother's voice. Without experience, man cannot be advised profitably to himself, for such hath Jehovah made him. Because man cannot discern angel presence, the angels alone can teach man and inspire him to new life. For they talk to him in his sleep, and show him what is for his own good. What, what? And when he waketh in the morning, he supposeth it was himself a-talking, and he is ambitious to obey himself. Patient and of long endurance are the angels of the Lord. And the God said, Will man ever know he hath been raised up? Will he be a believing, or will he too need to go to some new world and raise up the first fruits thereof, and tarl his hundreds of years with naked mortals? O oh, Jehovah, how wisely hast thou shaped the labors of the believing and the unbelieving? Lo, man cometh forth out of the earth, a boasting of his unbelief, saying, Except I see with my own eyes and feel with my own hands, I will not believe. But thou, O oh Jehovah, hast fitted a labor for his eyes and for his hands to his heart's content. And yet another man cometh forth out of the earth, being believing, and quickly he mounteth to the thrones of thy exalted heavens. Great is the work of thy Lord, O Father. The Lord said, Who knoweth thy wisdom, O Jehovah? 
who cannot perceive thee in the foundations of thy everlasting worlds. Thou hast provided a nurses for the new earth, and out of this thy footstool will thou bring forth the many who will in the far future time be laboring as thy Lord and his angels labor here. Of what expanse is thy wisdom, O Jehovah? Thus they conversed and journeyed forth till they reached the throne and place of the Lord, and here they might fast their ships. And they descended down to the city of Angu, in upper middle of the continent of Bohu, Africa. And the Lord now sent messengers to all the Ashars in his dominions, appointing ten days of rest and time for feasting them and time for feasting and music and dancing and worshiping Jehovah. So it came to pass that the angels of the Lord and a God held a reunion of being the first one for over a hundred years. And then God went around about over all the continent of Ohu, inspecting the work the Lord had done, and he pronounced it good before Jehovah. When God had rested the full time, he and his host entered the ship of God, and a taken leave of the Lord and his host departed on the journey, saluting the Lord with a thousand trumpeters in the name of Jehovah. Chapter 11 and now came the long journey across the ocean. A God said, Great is thy wisdom, O Jehovah, in the division of the waters. Thy barriers provide nations against nations. A refuge is thou made beyond the waters, and the evil man cannot pursue. But greater still are thy spirit oceans, O Father. The spirits of darkness cannot cross over, and the spirits of newborn peoples are not contaminated. Thou far seeing, thou bestower of thrift into the hands of thy gods and thy lords. The master of the ship provided well for the journey. And presently the vessel of fire sped over the water, high above the clouds that cover the ocean. Onward to the west, bleak and desolate, through the spirit sea, unseen by mortals. On the far-off borders where the lands come the water's edge, the lord of the land of Thura, America, stood stationed in a ship to welcome God to the great west lands. And this was the land called by the angels and after time North Gautama, signifying the meeting of nations and the dawn of Cosmon. And God came down out of the ship and stood on the land, and a lot of ethereal flame descended upon him. And Jehovah spoke out of the light to saying, Hear me, O my son, hither have I brought thee. This land is the last of the circle, even as Waga is the first. Behold, when the earth is circumscribed around about with such as choose me, I will come hither with a great awakening light to the souls of men. On this land will I finish the dominion of the gods and the lords on earth, even as I begun on Huaga. Through thee and thy lords will I now lay the foundation of my kingdoms. On this land will I raise up a people who shall be the fulfilling of that which the Ahims of Waga profess. For my chosen shall come out boldly against all dominion save mine, even Jehovah. Look over this land, my son, and provide unto the time of Cosmon. My prophet shall foretell thee what shall happen. Thou shalt look upon the mountains and strong standing rocks, and the thought of thy soul shall pierce them, and the impression thereof shall be as a written book before the races of men in that day. 
neither shall I know the cause, but they shall come forth in tens of thousands, putting away all gods and lords and ancient tyranny for my sake. Thy soul shall be my talisman, deep engraven in the land and water and mountain. On this land alone shall not any lord nor god be established by the sword, for it is my land which I plan for the deliverance of the nations of the earth. The hosts of both the ships came and joined in gleesome reunion after a hundred years' absence, and it came the pass that God traveled over the land and waters of the great west continent and all the places that the Lord had searched out to the east and west and north and south, even to the farthest boundary, were revealed and recorded in the books of heaven. And a God said, And thou, my Lord, shalt mark out the place of the dominion of Jehovah in the fountain of his kingdom on earth, and a record of thy labor shall descend through the lords and gods that come after thee, even down to the time of the coming light of Cosmon. And the people who shall dwell here till that day shall never be worshippers of any lord or god, such as other people shall worship. Let my seal be put upon this land in the name of Jehovah, and to him I consecrate it forever. <laughs> So after that time a God rested from his labors, and the Lord with him, and the Lord prepared a feast and reunion for all the angels in his dominions. And they thus assembled and sang and prayed and danced, and conversed on things long past and things of the future, reassuring one another of their love and high esteem after the manner of mortals of this day. When the banquet was ended, God and his traveling host in due ceremony and order took their leave. Thus a God departed, and when the ship of God was raised up and underway, the voice of Jehovah came to God, saying, Steer thy ship, my son, around about over all the other lands and islands and waters of the earth. Go low down to the earth that thy recording angels may witness the affairs of men and all the places I created on the earth and the waters of the earth. Thus a God visited all places on land and water, even where man lived not, as well as where he lived, and the angels made a record thereof in the books of heaven. And the time of the journey of the visits of God to the places of the earth and her heavens was one year and seven days, and his rest was completed. So he sent messengers to Horeb, his heavenly king, him, announcing the time of his coming, and he then set sail therefore. Chapter 12 When it was known in Horeb that the God was about to return, Haja put all things in readiness for God's reception, and there volunteered ten thousand musicians and five thousand bearers of banners, one thousand marshals and officers of the throne, and one hundred thousand receivers to go part way and meet God and his companions. And Ahaja granted their prayers, and they started at once of being the most majestic host that had yet gone forth in the lower heaven. And when they were a little way off, behold, a god and a ship of fire approached in heavenly splendor, and the marshals met him and laid hold of the hand of the ship, whereon all the host did like manner, save the musicians who sang and played. When they drew near and entered Horeb, Ahaja broke down from his high estate and left the throne a runner to meet 
scowled as a child would run to its father. And when the multitude saw this, they also broke loose from decorous behavior and gave full vent to their outburst of love for God and his hosts. And all the people became a tumult and rivalry of rejoicing. In a little while, God and Haja turned and walked to the throne. Ascending their own, and Haja took his place, and God sat on his right and order reigned. Haja said, In thy name, O Jehovah, I welcome back thy first son of earth to the kingdom thou hast bestowed upon him, and thy sons and daughters. As much as he hath glorified thee by his labor and by his wisdom and love, so do we honor him in thy name and for thy glory. And the God said, In thy name, O Jehovah, do I return to these my loves, that I am returned, I glorify thee, O my Father, that thou hast made them to rejoice as the glory of my life. And now a great light gathered up around the throne, so that many could look thereon. And presently the power of Jehovah came upon Haja, and the voice of Jehovah spake through him, saying to God, This is again thy throne, O my son. Thou shalt finish that which I have put upon thee. Thy people shall learn the manner of my kingdoms, and know that even as I make all, so do I rule over all. What, what? Hang up thy traveling garb, my son. Dismiss thy traveling hosts and resume thy seat on the throne, for I gave it to thee. The voice departed. A Haja rose up and stood aside, and the light fell upon a god, and he resumed the throne and was hailed by the multitude in Jehovah's name. A god said to Haja, because thou hast prospered my kingdom during one whole year, thou shalt be my companion and assistant, with power and wisdom to superintend all matters not direct to my lords. Behold, this day have I set apart as a new day in heaven and earth, because on this day the sun taketh its course for the Haydan, the north line. And from this time forth it shall be called the New Year's Day. So shall it be from this time forth, the day of the relief watching Horeb. Hear my voice, O Hajar, and ye are the counsel of the throne of heaven. That which I command shall ye proclaim throughout heaven and earth to all who serve me. Because of the increase of the kingdom of Horeb, I will have the place enlarged, and the council shall no longer be called a council, but a Moab, for it shall be an assembly over all councils below it. And Moab shall no longer deal with the affairs of individuals, even though they be lords. But it shall have dominion with the cities and kingdoms of heaven, and with judgments and decrees. But in all manners of less degree, this my son Ahaja shall have dominion. And thou, O Ahaja, shalt Build thee a house in Horeb, near this throne, and it shall be thy house, and the place of thy business. Chapter 13 So God enlarged the place of Horeb, and built one thousand more pillars of fire, enlarging the circle, and otherwise making it a place of splendor, and a God called together the recorders from the libraries of heaven, and caused him to select one hundred thousand new members from the house of Moab, Parliament, a choosing them from the highest on the lists. 
In this manner a god said, Seek not the most learned, nor the most prayerful for members, but choose ye such as rank highest and assimilate into Jehovah and to their followers. For such are the first to become gods and goddesses. And Jehovah saith, A strong man may do more good works than a weak one, and yet the latter may stand fairer in my sight. I open the way to the weak and the strong, to the learned and the unlearned. And to God said, In all these matters, whatever man or woman hath put away self desires for self's sake, serving the Father by laboring for others, is on the road to wisdom. And in the record show a sufficient time for growth in such man or woman, whereby these virtues become organic. Then choose ye that person, for of such shall be my web. What, what? So the laborers gathered from the heavens round about Agna, and built Moab within, suitable for the members to be seated according to their rank. And when it was finished on that same day, the recorders brought the new members, and they went into the temple to their respective places. And when seated, a guild spake from the throne, a saying, To thee, O Jehovah, have I built the house of Moab in Horeb, and by thy wisdom have I chosen the members thereof. To thee, O Father, I dedicate this house, and it shall be thy house. Give us a thy light, O Jehovah, that we may not err. And a light descended from the heavens above and fell upon the members of Moab as a symbol of approval by the archangels. And presently the new members rose up every one of their own accord, but the old members remained seated. And a god said, Above your heads I make the sign of Jehovah's name in a circle of fire and the cross and a leaf of life for bad are ye sworn to the father's labor hear me O oh my beloved here henceforth denied individual ministration with individuals but ye are now become a unit with many and with these must your labor and your love and your wisdom be in concert of action Henceforth must ye no longer say, What can I do for this man or that man, or this woman or that woman, or this child or that child? For this is individual labor, and now on the earth such ministration belongeth to the Ashars, and in atmospherious such ministration belongeth to the Asaphs. But ye shall minister to organic communities or composed individuals, for their communities for factories, and others for education, and others for treatment of the sick, and such communities exist both on earth and in heaven. Ye shall divide yourselves into groups for this purpose, and every group shall have its special business in charge, and each group shall stand in Moab as one member of Jehovah's judgment sit. According to your talent shall ye divide and group together choose in such department wherein each one hath the greatest wisdom and strength. Oh, withdraw then and thus complete your groups according to the rates my proper officers will assign. And then return again into Moab and in Jehovah's name take the seats allotted to y'all. Chapter 14 On the second day after the house of Moab was completed and all the members were in their respective places, Jehovah spake through a god saying, now is the beginning of the second resurrection, even as the corporeal putteth off the corporeal body, and is born a spirit becoming the first resurrection, so are ye 
putting away individual self and becoming an organic community, the beginning of the second resurrection, as they the first are for individual self, so have I found them close on the face of the earth, as they survived on the earth on corporeal food, so have I made them to survive in the lowest heaven on atmospheric food, as Moab hath risen above these conditions, so will I exalt the foundations of the house of Moab higher up from the earth than Horeb, and Moab shall be the lower house of my kingdom. The voice of Jehovah departed, and God saluted Hajah in the name of the Father. And a great light enveloped the house of Moab, and the Asanars chanted a hymn of praise. Thereafter God arose and stood in the throne of Jehovah, saying, Hear ye, O all ye people of heaven above and heaven below, a house of Moab in the beginning of the second resurrection is founded in Jehovah's name. Proclaim ye the words that have gone out of my mouth to the east and west and north and south, and to the swift messengers of the arcs of the firmament above. Glory, glory be to Jehovah, boundless and almighty creator, present and full of love, wisdom, and power. Glory to thee forever and ever. Amen. The house of Moab chanted a proclamation. The swift messengers assumed their respective globes of light and began to ascend in every direction, carrying the word of the exalted spears. And a god crowned Haja as sub god of Horeb, and he was proclaimed all the quarters of heaven and earth, and the history. The history of his name exists to this day as Ja amongst mortals. Chapter 15 And Ja said, With the exaltation of Moab, so shall my places be exalted before Jehovah. Let the enumerators of the communities of heaven send representatives before me.